before we jump into this, I mean, I'll give you the background of who I am, but we'd love to hear from you guys. Like, what brings you here today? Are you mostly like founders, marketers? Um, let's start out with founders. Can we get a show of hands? Okay. Cool. How about marketers that are here just to learn a little about content marketing? Okay, what about everyone else? What are you guys doing here? Your friends wrote you in and you don't know. I'm in product, so that's why I'm here. Cool. Well, last question, then we'll jump in. But how do you guys feel in terms of confidence with content marketing? Let's say, like, show of hands who's doing content marketing for their own business now. All right. Oh, we got two. We got three. Look at that, we got four. Just not well. Okay, well, you're trying. That's all that matters. <laughs> Well, cool. Um, last thing before we jump in, I will say, definitely want to start out talking like a little bit more high level about the benefits of content marketing and then getting really rudimentary in terms of some of the biggest ways you can get started. Um, so I did want to say though, the slides go much more granular, get much more in depth about some techniques for using data to find really great topics, just in case we skim the surface on that. Um, how to write a really kick-ass article that's going to drive results time and time again. Just know you can download all those slides at bit.ly slash content-marketing-workshop. Um, and yes, I was really psyched that I was able to get that from Bit. Um, so check out the slides, you can get everything in there, and if you want, you can even bounce, you don't have to listen to me blabber nonsense for the next 20 minutes. But, anyways, cool. So who am I? Uh, so co-founded Junto, I guess it was about three, three and a half years ago, with my business partner David. Um, I guess I'll start out there, I've worked at three different marketing agencies over the years, so I've had a pretty good chance to get exposure to ways that different agencies do content marketing, both poorly and really effectively. Um, over the process, I've helped around 150 businesses to scale their business through SEO and content marketing. Um, I had to double check that number last week, but I think the total count is seven so far that have been acquired. Uh, two more that it sounds like will go through in the next like one to two months, so hopefully that number goes up to nine. Uh, but anyways, I've published personally on Content Marketing Institute, Startups.com, uh, what else do we have up there? Duct tape Marketing and a few others. Um, either myself or my teammates have helped get businesses and our own team featured on Inc. Magazine, Entrepreneur, Quick Sprout, Inbound.org and probably a couple dozen others through link building outreach campaigns that we've done. Um, so that's a little overview on me. Uh, big thing we're going to be talking about today, I unfortunately have to keep on walking back here to change the slides, but the biggest thing we're going to be talking about is content marketing. A, why you should be investing in content marketing in 2019. B, we're going to talk about how to use data in order to find great topics that your business should be writing about in order to drive proven ROI as fast as possible. From there, we're gonna talk about how you write a really kick-ass blog article that actually drives results. We're gonna walk through exactly how to do all this stuff, one step at a time. So, starting out with why content marketing matters. Uh, so I'm gonna throw a bunch of stats that you write up there. Um, the source for that is a study done by SparkToro, a really well-respected software slash SEO company in the industry. But they basically did a study where they looked at all Google Chrome data for the course of, I believe it was Q, I guess, oh, February 2018, um, compared to October 2016 to see how referral traffic was changing for websites over time. Only number I want you to pay attention to right up here is that Google is right at the very top of that list. The next one down is Facebook. Google right now, as of February 2018, drives about 58% of all referral traffic on the internet. That means 58% of your website visitors are coming from Google, on average. The next one down is Facebook with 5.2%. So Google is literally 10xing the ROI of Facebook for you right now if you are leveraging Google correctly. If that's not enough, we have a ton of words on there that we're not going to get into completely. But long and short of it, we put together a full article talking about all the different benefits of content marketing. Just to give you a really quick overview, well, the easier way to do it is read the full article on our site or Google search content marketing benefits. When I searched earlier this morning, we were still coming up first on Google. Uh, we may be second, but we, uh, we've done pretty well ranking for that term. Search content marketing benefits, you can read that really extensive guide that we get into. But really the biggest thing with content marketing is A, you're earning an ability through content marketing when blogging about the right topics. 
to ultimately control the conversation when your customers are actively searching for you online. So the question I always ask is how valuable would it be to have a salesperson working on autopilot for you when people are actively looking for your products or services? If the answer is very valuable, then you should probably be investing in content marketing, at least to a small degree. Uh, some of the other benefits that we won't get into right now, one, it's going to put sales on autopilot for you. You can stop with a cold sales outreach. I know that because that's exactly what we did. For, I think it was three of my first six months that I was doing Junto full time, literally half of my day was cold sales outreach, and it was terrible. Didn't lead, actually it led to one sale over the course of three months. Uh, that client stayed on board for about six months, did not renew with us. Uh, sometime around then, I think it was April 2017, we said, okay, we're done with cold sales outreach. We shifted all of our efforts towards content marketing, and I feel pretty confident saying that to date, all of our clients either come from referrals or inbound leads. So putting sales on autopilot, as I said before, you also gain the ability to control the conversation when people are actually looking for you online. Uh, you also gain this incredible ability to amplify your brand awareness if you're writing about all the different topics that your customers are looking for. Uh, ultimately, it provides compounding ROI by helping you to not only rank for one term as you scale, but if you write five different articles and start ranking for five terms, all of those articles, I think the phrase is uh, the rising tide way, uh, rises all ships or something like that. But long and short of it, if you write a bunch of different articles, it's going to help all your other articles and all your service pages to rank higher and higher over time, and ultimately you see compounding ROI for all those content marketing initiatives. Um, yeah, and then the last thing we put up there for now is going to make Life 10x easier for your customer service team. If you have people who are reaching out to you who are saying, hey, I don't understand how this feature of your product works, or I don't understand how this element of your service works, or I can't figure out how to do this, why not write just a badass article about it, and rather than have your customer service team send out a customized email to those people, take up 30 minutes of their day every day, instead they say, hey, you know what, we actually created an entire walkthrough showing you how to do this, or showing you how to get this to work. And ultimately it's gonna save your team a ton of time, and it's gonna save you a ton of money. So, the big thing I always get into from there is, I'm part of the content marketing agency, like no shit, I'm gonna tell you that content marketing is great. So, what I want to do next is just share a couple really quick case studies. We're not gonna get too deep into this data. You can read the full case studies if you want to just by searching Ridester Junto case study. Um, this one is actually a little outdated, so I'll give you the updated numbers in just a minute, but over the course of eight months of working with Ridester, we helped them to see a 119% organic traffic growth. Uh, and we have some of the numbers right down here, if you can see them. So 118.67% session increase. Bounce rate improved about 5.5%, average session duration up 11.97%. Uh, this right here, we obviously redacted this information just to be protective of all their trade secrets. But ultimately, this is a list of all the different keywords that we were monitoring for their website that they deemed to be top priority for them to rank for. Any of these terms highlighted in right up here have at least 18,000 people searching for that exact match phrase every single month, not to mention all the different variants. Uh, oh, excuse me. Um, to date, so we looked up the numbers earlier today because this case study was from April 2018. We probably put this together May 2019. We're actually still working with Ridester today, so we're pushing probably like 20, 20 months? So that's up there. 20 months, 22 months that we've been working with them. Uh, when I pulled up the numbers earlier today, they had seen a 479.1% organic traffic increase in those 22 months. Uh, next one that we're going to jump into really quickly, choose wheels, same thing if you want to read the full case study and see exactly what we did, which is going to be all the stuff we're talking about today. Google search, choose wheels, Juto, case study, it'll pop up right away. Uh, they saw a 121.8% organic traffic increase in six months. Uh, and here's just a little snapshot as well of all the different keywords that they went from ranking anywhere from in position 100 plus four to ranking first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Um, so from there, that was obviously where I'm going to say that really uh, you know jazzy stuff about like, hey, you can do this too. So I'm sure the skepticism comes in at this point. Um, but anyways, what we're going to do is just delve into all the different stuff that you can do to basically on your own see the exact same results as all these other businesses. So starting out, 
we're going to talk about how you can actually find the first three months of blog topics in under an hour. First thing that we're going to do is basically build out a list of all sorts of competing blogs that you're basically going to analyze to figure out, looking at data, what blog topics should you prioritize. So what I would recommend doing here is start out by just jotting down a list of like five different competitors that stick out to you. From there, what you're also going to do is go to Google and type in best, followed by one or two words that describe your industry, followed by the word blogs. So for us, we're a digital marketing company. You might search for best marketing blogs. What you're going to get right here is a list of all sorts of different results that are going to have very similar formats. It's going to be the X best blogs of 2019 or the X best blogs in 2018 that relate to your industry. Pull those up and basically pull together a list of all those different sites that are listed in there. This is ultimately industry experts who are highlighting the top blogs in your industry. There's going to be a lot of subjectivity that goes into that, but we'll work through that in a minute. From there, what I would recommend doing is sign up for a trial of either SEMrush or Ahrefs. I personally prefer SEMrush. The screenshot is taken from them, but both these tools will do the exact same thing. Uh, SEMrush, I think, still does a 14-day trial. I believe Ahrefs charges a small fee for like a seven-day trial. Uh, for these two tools, we use them every single day at Junto, and I couldn't recommend them enough, even if you just sign up for one month of the service. What you're going to do from here is take all those different competitor sites that you found, plug them into SEMrush or Ahrefs. In SEMrush, you're going to go into the Pages section, and what you're literally going to see in front of you is based on their top ranking keywords, you're going to see which blog topics are actually driving results for all of these competing sites on an ongoing basis. Um, so just a redacted one from a sample site here, we can see this first article right here drives like 4.2% of this site's total traffic. That one blog article alone ranks for about 540 different keywords. Second one right there, 3.58%, ranks for almost 1,500 different keywords. So long and short of it, what we're looking at here is as we go through this with every one of our competitors, we're ultimately building out a list of what blog topics are actually driving results for every single one of these competitors. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to evaluate all those topics. Uh, so when we're evaluating those topics, we'll start out by building out a list of maybe 30, 40, 50 different topics that might make sense for us to prioritize. From there, we look at three primary things in order to determine which blog should we prioritize. The first is understanding what is the word count of each of these different articles. If you don't have a word count tool, you can literally just Google, Google Chrome word count or word count checker, anything like that, and pull up any of the results on there. Uh, only reason that we look at word count is a study done by Backlinko in September 2016, I believe it was, maybe 2017, uh, showed that the average first page result on Google is about 1,800, maybe, I think it was 1,897 words to be exact. Um, really what that says, Google strongly favors long form content over shorter content. So longer content tends to perform much better which means if you can find some topics that are actually driving results that are only 500 words, they're going to be really easy to outrank as opposed to a lot of these other blogs. So first thing you want to look at is word count. Second and third thing which we'll look at together is one, how many different websites are linking back to each of these articles? And two, how does the URL rating compare for these ranking pages to your own site? And I promise we'll get into all that stuff now. So right here, these are screenshots taken from Ahrefs, another tool that we work with on a daily basis here. Um, Ahrefs gives you some incredible insights. The two big ones we're going to focus on right now are going to be the number of referring domains, which is a, just a count of how many different websites are linking back to a given page on your site. And then the other thing is this UR metric. You can see right down here, there's a 10 next to it. That's going to be your URL rating. So what these two tools tell you, or two metrics tell you, first of all, Referring domains, how many different websites are linking back to this one page that you're taking a look at. Google very heavily favors linked to content, and backlinks are the factor that have been proven time and time again to be most correlated with high rankings. Which is to say, if you can get really good websites to link back to your own content, you're very likely to rank at the top of Google. But most importantly, some of these pages you might find don't have any powerful backlinks, and as a result, it can be even lower hanging fruit for you to target. So we're going to look at these two metrics together, and what we're doing here is taking a look at the Junto website. 
So we have two sample pages right here for those who can't see. The page at the top is actually one that Dave wrote a little while back about lead generation. It has five different websites linking back to it. The second one is a page that we are in no way trying to promote on our site. It's literally just a category page on our blog. It has zero websites linking back to it. But the first page right here, as we can see right up here, has five different websites linking back to it. And what that translates to for this given page is it has a URL rating of 14. Now the reason that's important is if we look at this page that has zero backlinks pointing back to it on our own site, what we see is that page has a URL rating of 10. So what that tells us is that a normal page on our site, a brand new page on our site, by default has a URL rating of 10. So when we're looking at search results, when we're trying to understand what content can we outrank, if we see that something is ranking in the top 10 results and it has a URL rating of 8, 9, or 10, it's pretty safe to assume that we're going to be able to outrank that. So what we'll do is we'll hypothesize based on that. And we added in a content example that actually Darren, our content director over here, wrote a little while back. Uh, but we're going to talk about how we analyze the content development topic that he wrote about about two, three months ago. So first of all, we're going to search for what currently ranks. We're going to go to Google, type in content development or other variants of the phrase. We're going to take a look at all those top 10 results that currently come up. First thing we're going to do is we're going to look at what is the average word count of all these different results. The one thing I would say is exclude the outliers, exclude the sites like Wikipedia, because it's going to be very hard to outrank Wikipedia. Uh, but what we do want to do is take a look at what's the average word count for these results and how many of these pages have a lower URL rating than our base rating for our own website. So for this content development example, we looked at the average word count. The average first page result on Google when this data was polled, I believe it was last week, was 810 words. So it's pretty, pretty short. What that tells us is if we write a longer form piece of content, there's a good chance we can write something much more useful to users that will ultimately rank on Google much faster. From there, we took a look at the URL ratings. What we found is one of the top 10 results has a URL rating of 10, which is the brand new rating that we have for our you know, base page on our site. See, four of the top 10 results have a URL rating of 12 or lower. Three of the top 10 results have one different website linking back to them. And five of the top 10 results have three or fewer websites linking back to them. Now, Putting all that aside, what does that really mean? If we write a long form article on content development, A, we should rank in the top 10 results on Google without needing to get any other websites to link back to us. And B, we should rank in roughly the top five results on Google if we get about five different websites or more to link back to us. So we'll come back to that in a minute. But ultimately when you're going through, when you're analyzing all these different blog topics, take this exact format right here, and it's very, very safe to say if you follow this and figure out what topics have that lower base URL rating than you, you'll be able to rank in no time. Um, and again, for those two metrics, we recommend using Ahrefs, which is just another SEO tool. Um, what you can even do, again, sign up for a free or sign up for a small paid trial of it. You can even cancel it after seven days or cancel after a month when you've done all this initial research and ultimately put the SEO tools aside until maybe six months later when you want to reanalyze all these topics again. So, next thing we're going to talk about is now that we found our new topic, content development in this case, we're going to talk about how do you actually write an article that ranks at the top of Google in 2019. So, taking a quote from Darren over here, thank you. Uh, if you want to rank well, your content needs to be better than every other result on the front page of Google. So keeping that in mind, writing an article that ranks, how do you actually go about writing the best result on Google? What we do is we have four primary things that we keep in mind. The first is writing for your target reader. The second is giving the people what they want. Third is making it long form and as actionable as possible. And then the fourth is just make it readable. So first thing that we'll delve into is writing for your target reader. Uh, this is like no shit Sherlock statement, I apologize, but ask yourself this question every single time. Who is your target reader? Um, it's gonna sound super obvious, it's gonna sound repetitive when you're doing it for every single article, but the more you can think about the perspective of your target reader, the more helpful your content is going to be for them. Um, now one thing, 
I will say there's a lot of value behind customer development or user research and all that sort of stuff. I personally do feel like a lot of marketers get way too into the trenches with customer research, customer development. My pick is if you're starting a brand new blog, you don't need to bother with customer development. It's going to be very expensive and very cost or very time uh, consuming and very resource intensive. And you can get into all that stuff later on. So what we're going to talk about instead is exactly how you can do a much more budget-friendly and effective version of customer research than what almost every other marketer is going to tell you to do. And it all starts with giving the people what they want. So what we do whenever we're creating a new piece of content is we start with just a basic outline to understand what are the core elements that we need to cover in order to create the best resource on the internet couple things that we'll look at. First of all, we'll start off by using our expertise. You guys are experts at what you do. So if you're writing a topic about, or Darren's writing a topic about content development, he does this stuff every single day. There are very few people in the world that know content development better than Darren does. So Darren can start out by saying, hey, here are the core elements that we need to delve into. That's going to give you a really good base framework for that content piece that you are working on. The next elements you're going to look at are borrowing brilliance from other top ranking articles. So Google is literally the greatest gold mine on earth when it comes to content. Because Google is actually telling you, hey, in our own algorithm, these top 10 results that you see when you search for content development, these are the best 10 resources on the internet about this given subject matter. So what we do with every single article that we write is we read every single one of those top 10 articles. We try and pick apart what are the key trends that we see in all these articles. Do they give a high level definition overview of what content marketing is? Do they give a step-by-step -step process for how to develop a brand new article? And we'll literally just bullet out, hey, these are all the core elements that we're seeing covered across all these different top performing articles. If that's not enough, two other really great resource pools that you can look at, especially for topics that aren't researched or written about quite as extensively. Uh, if you search on Quora for popular answers that relate to your industry, a couple little gold nuggets there. One, if you see topics that are coming up time and time again in Quora, there's a very strong indicator that that topic is not being covered well enough on the internet. People are constantly going back and asking that question again and again and again. So if you see that coming up on Quora, that's a gold mine that people really want great content about that subject matter, so put it together. The other thing too, looking at those top performing articles, one of the biggest gold nuggets that you can find is look at the comment section and identify any questions that people are asking in the article. That is literally people slapping you in the face saying, hey, I want information about this given subject matter. So what you can do is A, sometimes in comments, authors will chime in later on and say, oh, that was a great question, here's a brief answer to that. You can obviously borrow some brilliance from that and try and incorporate some of those themes. Or you can even take your own spin on it and just make sure that you do cover those core elements within the new article that you're writing. So the other one, this is like the vaguest advice I can ever give, so I apologize. I always try my best to make this as actionable as possible. But make your content long form and make it insanely actionable. Our rule of thumb for most top performing content to rank for highly competitive queries is aimed for about 2,000 plus words. Uh, again, that goes back to that Brian Dean statistic from September 2016 that the average first page result on Google is 1,897 words. And there's a good chance that that number has actually gone up since that time, but can't speak for any other studies that have been done since then. Um, so start out by making that article as long form as possible. Use 2,000 words as your benchmark there. Incorporate the most helpful elements that you did find in your outline. If you can find a way to consolidate ideas or scrap ideas, do it. But from there, take all those core elements that you pulled together from researching all those different articles that have been written about the subject. Make sure that you incorporate all those in your own article. Uh, the next thing, again, this is like the biggest advice I can give, but make it insanely actionable. The rule of thumb we always use is if you're writing the seven step guide about how to build a better workout routine, Steps one and two should be grab a pen and pencil or grab a pen in your notebook and start jotting down X, Y, and Z. The more actionable you can make it, the better it's going to be. Even if it seems like rudimentary stuff, assume that your audience is in kindergarten and doesn't know what they're doing and just make it as actionable as possible. Walk them through every single painstaking detail and they'll thank you for it down the way. Uh, what else do we have in there? 
two, uh, well, I guess one other big thing in that realm, we've seen time and time again, there are two types of blog content that outperform all the rest. And those are gonna be step-by-step -step processes in long-form lists. So think about all the articles that you've seen on, you know, whatever it is, BuzzFeed and all those other sites that are the 17X of Y. Anytime you can incorporate really big numbers like that, that type of content tends to perform the best. A couple other little secrets within there, Odd numbered lists perform better than even. Another little thing is that aim for nine or above numbered items in any of those list sets. People start seeing double digits in particular, but nine really bare minimum. And they start automatically assuming that, wow, there's a ton of stuff in here, this must be good. And even if they only get halfway through your article, they're about twice as likely to actually share it on social, which at the end of the day is gonna indirectly help your content to perform better over time. Um, the other big one, this all comes back to Darren as well, is ask yourself this question as soon as you are done with the first draft of the article. If I typed this phrase into Google that you're trying to rank for and found this article come up on Google, would I be satisfied with what I find? And it's, it seems like kind of common sense, but if you're trying to rank for an article SEO tools and you don't have a list of the best SEO tools on the internet, it's probably not the best resource on the internet. So think about it from the reader's perspective. Try and think, hey, if I were searching for this type of content, this article comes up, am I gonna be happy with what I find? If the answer is no, then go back to the drawing board. See what else you need to incorporate. See what you need to strip away. But either way, make it the most kick-ass article that you can find online. And then the last thing in here is use Sumo's headline generator tool to come up with a catchy title. So we have a whole bunch of different processes that we use in-house for this, but really simple way to create a great title that people are going to click on and that's gonna drive results is to use this free tool. If you just Google Sumo headline generator, you'll see it come up right away. Um, or similarly, if you look in the slides, it's actually linked out to right in there, and you can just pull it up and in there. Uh, but what they've done is they've basically built out this tool that allows you to plug in a couple like really basic things about what your article is actually about and they'll come up with a bunch of different viral, catchy type titles that you can work with and ultimately decide which one you want to use for your core title for your new article. Last, oh, not the last, but next thing is to make it as readable as possible. Uh, the example we always go back to is the content is exactly the same in both things, uh, but I always ask the question of which one would you rather read, the one on the left or the one on the right? And you know the joke I always make is if you are a human being, you're probably gonna choose the one on the right. So the point there is that really the only difference between those two is that the one on the right is digestible. We've taken this really, really lengthy paragraph that was really densely packed together and just broken it up into a couple different sections. So something simple like breaking your paragraphs into a few different sections is gonna go a long way in terms of driving content content visibility, but a couple of our favorite just actionable things that you can work with for every single article that you do write. One, break paragraphs into two to three sentence chunks. Your intro paragraph in particular, I'd say break it into one to two sentence chunks. It's gonna be much more easy for people to skim through the content, which at the end of the day, people are lazy. Nowadays, they have very short attention spans. The more you can break up your content, the better it's going to be for the reader, which means the more likely they are to stay on your page. So first, break up your paragraphs into smaller chunks. For body paragraphs, aim for those two to three sentences as a really good guideline. Use the Hemingway app, which again, linked out to in the slides, if you wanna take a look at that tool. We personally use that tool for almost every article that we write. The biggest things that tool is gonna to do is it's gonna actually take the article that you wrote, and it's gonna tell you, hey, these sentences are really complex. You should break this one really mammoth sentence into a couple different smaller chunks. Similarly, it's gonna let you know when you're using things like adverbs. Adverbs weaken your words. Try to avoid using them. I think that was Sam Parr from The Hustle that said that quote that I totally just stole right there. But uh, avoid using adverbs, avoid using very complex terminology. Your reader doesn't care about what your vocabulary is. All they're looking for is the exact thing that they're searching for online. So the simpler you can make your content, the better it's going to be for you. Uh, a couple other little things that we'll incorporate are screenshots, videos, anything like that that's gonna just break up walls of text with any type of imagery. Uh, videos on top of that are gonna keep people on the site longer if they choose to watch the videos. 
which to a very large degree does actually benefit your search rankings with a factor called dwell time that we won't get into too deep right now. Uh, and then the other thing too, if anyone here has a WordPress site, actually let's see by a show of hands, does anyone here have a WordPress site? All right, 25% of the room, sounds about right. Uh, so WordPress users, download shortcodes ultimate. Uh, just make sure that it's compatible with your current version of WordPress before you add and install the plugin. Uh, but Shortcodes Ultimate is going to be a really great tool that's going to save you a ton of design expenses. Uh, what it does is it allows you to really easily add in all this custom design functionality into your blog article, which is going to make your content way more visually appealing, which A, again, is going to keep people on your site for longer. B, it's actually going to make your content much more likely to be shared and linked to. So going back to the content development theme, is as I mentioned, we had all these hypotheses that we put together based on what we've seen over time. So to recap them, the content development article that we were working on, we found out that the base URL rating for a page on our site is 10. We found out that one of the top 10 results on Google have a URL rating of 10, which is to say that if we write just a basic article, it's pretty safe to assume that within a couple months of writing it, we should be ranking in the top 10 results without doing any sort of link outreach efforts or getting any websites to link back to us. A couple other little things in there, we found that four of the top 10 results in Google have a URL rating of 12 or lower, which is to say that if we can get a URL rating of 13 or 14, there's a good chance we're gonna be outranking four of those 10 pages that are currently coming up on. Uh, the other thing that we found is three of the top 10 results on Google have one root domain backlink. Five of the top 10 results on Google have three or less root domain backlinks. So again, summarizing our key takeaways there, we should rank in the top 10 results on Google if we write just a basic, or if we write a long form article, but don't do any sort of link outreach for that content. To add to that, we should rank in the top five results on Google if we get five, maybe five to 10 different websites to link back to us. So the big question of how we did this is as of 516 that we pulled these metrics together. Uh, so Darren's article is already kicking ass. But so far we've converged five websites to link back to this article. The article has a URL rating of 14 for this page. We currently rank seventh for content development. And then we also captured the featured snippet for another longer tail query called content development process. Uh, so revisiting this, so the key things to note, URL rating and total root domain backlink count translates to us currently ranking seventh on there. So we did okay. We got about three quarters of the way to where we should be strictly looking at the data there. So you can see we should be ranking the top 10 results with any sort of link building. We should be ranking the top five results with five root domain backlinks. We're currently sitting at five root domain backlinks and we rank seventh. Which is to say that we got about, yeah, three quarters, two thirds of the way there strictly by following the data and doing exactly what the data told us to do there. So just a couple of quick action steps here. And yes, this is where we come in with the spiel about how great Junto is, but first thing I was gonna say, do-it-yourself approach. Because the reality is a lot of you are in the do-it-yourself mentality and we wanna give you the best insights we can to help you to do all this on your own. So two steps. One, download our content marketing playbook. Here's the bit.ly link right here, bit.ly dash content or slash content dash marketing, mktimg, I apologize, dash playbook. Again, you can get the link in the slides. We'll upload this to meet up probably later tonight, let's say. Uh, but if you go to that link right there or you just type in Junto content marketing playbook, you should get it to come up. Download that playbook. It goes way, way, way more in depth than this presentation does in terms of how we go about finding topics, writing kick-ass topics, doing link outreach, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so first step, download the content marketing playbook. Second step, start writing. Then second action step here is if you are looking for someone to help you out with all this stuff, then come talk to myself, Darren right over here, or David right up in front, the cozy sweatshirt. Um, and yes, we actually, now that I think of it, do have one cozy sweatshirt, which, what do you, what you got do you think? You got a pop quiz. I mean, you got a, yeah, like that. TFIDF, <laughs> quick. I love it, I love it. We'll say best question. Gets the, uh, <laughs> gets the sweatshirt right, cool. sitting right up there. It's like wearing a boat. What team or density do you recommend on your There you go. Oh, oh man. Oh, 
<laughs> we'll, uh, what we'll do though is we'll say at the very end, because we'll do a Q&A section for just a couple of minutes, really as long as you guys have questions, I can hang out. We'll say the we'll best question that comes way. up gets the sweatshirt. So, uh, but going back to our shameless plug just for like a minute, and then I promise we'll move on. Uh, so if you don't want to do this on your own, work with us. Uh, what I would say is come up, talk to us, we'll schedule a meeting, we'll try and understand where your business is at, and we'll let you know, honestly, we're the best partner for you, because sometimes we're not going to be. Uh, but for us, we come from, I think it's seven combined agencies between us, uh, and built up ultimately this ROI-centric and data-driven-centric framework for writing consistently great content that ranks at the top of Google. We just highlighted two quick case studies there from what businesses saw in six to eight months of working with us. Um, as I mentioned with the Riser site, they're up closer to about 470, 480% from about 21, 22 months of working with us. Um, to add to that, one of the other big reasons to work with us, we're powered by freelancers from around the world, which is to say that we bring in the best minds that we can find from across the globe to ultimately continuously improve our processes and drive better results for clients every single day. The third thing, promise, and then we're done from here, is we are currently hiring right now. Um, at the moment, we're looking for two positions. One, we're looking for new WordPress developers all the time, because we do have a white label web development leg of the business. Uh, the other thing is we're looking for an SEO account specialist. So we work with a lot of different clients from a lot of different industries. We do tend to do a lot of work in real estate and the affiliate marketing space. Uh, but for us, we're looking for an SEO account specialist, basically someone who just really is interested in SEO, wants to continue to learn about the space, who wants to be spending maybe two thirds of their time doing account management, working with clients on a daily basis, working with SEO strategists on our team to help build out strategies for all these clients. It ultimately gets work in a really lax atmosphere, which I think we have a couple of quick benefits up there. Uh, flexible schedule, unlimited PTO, uh, opportunity for equity compensation, pretty massive growth potential. We do have cold beer, usually we're stocked with pretty good beer as well. <laughs> Uh, and we are located, uh, I'm trying to think how we describe that area. Across the street? Yeah, I guess that's true. We're like five <laughs> minutes away from here. Uh, we are like right over there. That's, nice. that's, yeah, that's way easier. That's way easier. It's like that way, but that way completely. Yes. Oh, I guess that's a good one. Oh. All right, we're five minutes away from here. I don't know if any sense. <laughs> all right, so that's all, guys. Um, Thank you for taking the time to swing by here. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to just open the floor up and hear whatever questions you guys have. Man, not a single question. <laughs> Go for it. So is, is there a penalty for editing an article? Like, so you, you put your content out there and you know, you're not happy with seven, and I edit it, are you penalized for that? How often can you edit it? Glad you asked about that. We yeah. seem to have someone in the running for the sweatshirt right over here. So the <laughs> short answer is no, you're not. Um, what was the question? Oh, yeah, yeah. So actually, yeah, we'll repeat the question. So it asked a great question about whether it's okay to go back and edit articles that you wrote. So let's say you write an article in 2015 and you're not totally thrilled about where the article ranks. Is it okay for you to go back in and update the article later on? The short answer is it's 100% okay. In fact, Google loves it when you do that. Uh, the slightly more uh, expanded upon answer, I guess we'll say, is that that's actually one of the core things that we'll do with businesses that we work with, is we'll look at what we call underperforming content, and we'll do what we call a content remake, which is to say, A, we'll ensure that the content is actually updated for the current time, um, especially if we have articles from 2014, 2013, and before then. Things change in every industry every single day. So what we'll do is we'll take a look at it and say, hey, is this content still the best resource on the internet? We'll look for opportunities to expand upon the content. We may just re-optimize the content for search as well. Uh, but short answer, if you're taking articles that are already on your site, you're going back and you're expanding upon ideas to rank even better, that's like one of the best things you can be doing. So, cool. <laughs> Go ahead. Can I just buy backlinks on Fiverr? <laughs> oh boy, of course you had to ask that. <laughs> um, so can you buy backlinks on Fiverr? Or probably, anywhere. Yeah. Probably not if you want to rank at the top of the so buying backlinks is a, a practice that some SEOs will encourage. I personally would not recommend any sort of payment involving backlinks. 
Uh, but I definitely, at the very least, would not recommend buying any backlinks on Fiverr. <laughs> if you ever see any of those deals that say, we'll get you 100 new backlinks for $5 or for $10, you're gonna get backlinks from really spammy sites, which long and short of it can leave you extremely likely to get hit by a penalty by Google, which will make your traffic go from here down to here. And we've seen clients who have come to us after getting hit by penalties, and it's catastrophic. Uh, so, thank you for, for being the guy that asked that. Uh, any other questions? If you wanted to, if you're starting a new site and wanted to essentially transfer content from one site to another, um, is it bad to have just duplicate content on both sites? Because obviously you don't want to lose the SEO by removing the first site. Absolutely. So Brandon's spot on back there. So you don't want to duplicate the content, but there are things you can do instead. Um, for your specific scenario, so are you keeping both sites active? or are yes. you Okay, gotcha. So can, do you mind me asking why the reason to keep sure. content on both, uh, both sites? I'll just give you the short, so I work for social media agency. <laughs> okay. Um, one of our goals is to eventually develop a niche website in, in short that will be um, resource for social media people. Absolutely. Um, agency networks that make a lot of this. Okay. So one of the things I'm thinking through right now is if we start to develop content that we eventually want to populate that with, do we want to get value by putting it up on the blog in the meantime before the website is ready to go? Or just hold on to it as a popular website? So just so I understood that correctly, so you currently have your social media agency site, you're looking to launch the authority site. You want it sounds like most content to go on the authority site. Yes. Okay. So what I would recommend doing in that scenario, you could publish it on your current website, your current agency site. What you would wanna do is when you do publish it on your authority site, what you're gonna to wanna to do instead, and if you, do you have a WordPress site? Okay, so I'd recommend using Yoast SEO. So, um, well, actually, this is a good question. We're not certain exactly what copy the site is like Gotcha, okay. Uh, but your current site, your agency site, is on Yoast, or it's on Yoast, yeah, it's on uh, WordPress. Yeah. Perfect, so really short answer is what you can do is, for to make it as simple as possible, download the Yoast SEO plugin, and when you go into each of those articles that you've written on your agency website, you're gonna see a feature within the Yoast plugin. It's gonna be like that setting gears button. I, all sites, I feel like, have that exact same yeah. button. Um, you're gonna click on that, and there's gonna be a button or a section in there where you're gonna be able to fill out a URL. It's gonna say something about a canonical URL or canonical tag. What you're gonna do is you're basically going to, when you publish those articles on the authority site, you're gonna take the authority site URL. So for an example, let's say it's samplesite.com slash social media tools. You would take that URL there, you're gonna plop that into the Yoast canonical setting on your agency website, and what that does is it generates what's called a canonical which really just tells Google that, hey, look at this authority site as the main source of this content. They deserve all the credit for it. We're just borrowing content from them. There's a like, big misconception when it comes to duplicate content and SEO, but for simplicity, if you just add a canonical tag, it's gonna work out much better for the authority site. And would you say, going forward, well, if one of the things that we want to do is just ramping up the content that we're creating, so we yeah. can stuff copy this new set there. Uh, and if we're not doing I would say we're doing like a regular amount of agency blog posts right now. Would you say it would just kind of be better to pull off of publishing a lot of that that we want to be creating until we get a new site? That's a good question. Um, so let me ask, let me follow up with your question with another question. Sure. How similar is some of this content? Is it is it the type of thing where some of those articles could be consolidated, or are they very distinct topics that should stay completely distinct? We, we, once we get the new site up and running, we will have distinct content. Uh, gotcha. Right gotcha. So basically you're looking at, let's say there's five articles, they couldn't really be put together in any way. Um, so what I would say, man, this is tough, because I don't, I don't know your exact case-by-case -case scenario, yeah. but what I would say would be really great to do is when you launch a brand new site, Google tends to put new sites into like what they call the sandbox, which really is just to say for like six to 12 months after you launch the site, it's gonna be really hard to rank any content on that site. It's really Google's way of saying like, hey, let's see if you're here for the long term or not. Um, so when you launch that authority site, if you can 
really launch the site and begin the process by having a bunch of brand new fresh content, it's going to expedite that process of getting out of that sandbox and starting to see better rankings. Um, along those lines, another great thing I would say to do before I get back to the direct question um, is if you can launch a landing page for that authority site, you know, especially if it's going to be two, three, four months until you actually launch the full version of that site, it's going to be a great way to expedite results in the short term. Um, but if you can launch that site out of the gate and you have 5, 10, 15 articles that are totally ready to go on the site, that's going to be really helpful for building up the authority site. So if you can maybe find a balance between continuing to publish content on a regular basis for your main agency website, but also having a good, healthy amount of content ready to go on that authority site, so it is a great industry-leading resource out of the gate, that's probably going to be the best long-term approach. Yeah, great question. Thank you. Oh, yeah? So to piggyback on that point, do you find that there's generally a half-life of content or ranking? So if you're, as a hypothetical, you're launching a new product, what kind of lead time do you need in terms of SEO preparation if you have a sandbox and to, to make sure that you're, No, it's, it's a great question. So it's, it's like this really interesting paradox where Google loves really old websites because really old websites signal to Google that, hey, this has been around for a while, someone's taking this seriously, like there's a lot of history behind it and it gives it a little bit more trust. Uh, but at the same time, Google likes what they call fresh content. Uh, which fresh content could be a brand new article that you just wrote or a brand new par, uh, product review that you just published. Similarly, going back to this question over here, what you could actually do is let's say you write an article tomorrow and when your product launches a year from now, you say, hey, I want Google to see this really long form extensive article as like very new. You can go back in, you can tweak the article, you can change up a bunch of the wording, incorporate new sections, and ultimately Google's going to see that as fresh content which is going to help you to rank a little better. So, the really concise answer, give Google as long as humanly possible in order to like analyze your website at large, and when you're ready to launch, really make a big push to update all that content that is on your site, maybe for a couple months afterwards. Um, keeping fresh content time and time again is gonna help you to continuously improve rankings. Uh, definitely don't feel like you need to go in like within 24 hours of launching say okay I'm gonna update every article on my site But if you can get into the habit of let's say once a week going through and updating one of those old articles It's going to significantly improve your rankings uh, As far as timeline to see ROI goes we generally say I guess with a new site It's always tough the more you're publishing content the more you're getting websites to link back to you the quicker It's going to be to see ROI uh, but what I would say to do is actually start out trying to find a handful of very low competition keywords that maybe only get 50 searches a month on Google. And you can use a tool like, oops, sorry? Let's show up. Exactly. Focus on those really long tail things and just try and get traffic right out of the gate to your site. And then what you can do is you can go back to those articles later on and you can ultimately re-optimize for a keyword search that just gets more search volume on an ongoing basis. Uh, but it'll help you to see ROI in the short term while also building for the long term as well. Okay. I uh, did in Kansas City, I don't know what you said a couple months ago, you guys were talking about, they do like a third of the time, it's really well written. That's awesome. Usable, so. I'm glad to hear it. Well, yeah, so here it is, proof so of the measure. man. Proof <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I was doing some other stuff on my site, rewriting, rebuilding, putting some stuff in the LinkedIn. So I haven't really done the SEO component yet, but I'm starting to go that way now. Uh, with the old SEO, is it paid? Is it worth it? Is it going to give you that much more data on the paid component, or can you get a lot of it just by using some of the other, you know, us or yourselfers? It's a good question. I would say. You definitely don't need to pay for Yoast to get a lot of benefit out of it. Like on the Junta site, we have Yoast Premium. Um, a lot of our clients have Yoast Premium as well. The biggest benefits, and Darren, please chime in if there's anything else you can think of, uh, but the biggest Yoast Premium benefits that I would say you'll get is it makes it way easier to A, set up redirects, and B, it makes it way easier to do what we call content de-indexation. Uh, de gets a little bit more into the technical side of SEO, but 
long and short of it, if you have a bunch of pages on your website that aren't driving any sort of organic traffic, that don't have any meaningful search rankings, sometimes it's actually better to permanently remove that content from your site and let Google know, hey, that content's gone, it's never coming back. Especially if you have a lot of indexed pages on your site. Ultimately, every page on your site kind of dilutes the value of every other page on your site. So if you're writing meaningful, long-form content on a regular basis, you're not gonna have any like deadweight pages. But if you have, especially in e-commerce, you'll see this very often, if you have product pages that don't get any traffic or outdated product pages, in Yoast Premium, you can do what's called setting up a 410 header, uh, where you basically tell Google, hey, forget about this page, it's gone forever. Uh, but if you're dealing with a site that has 50, 100 pages, you're probably not gonna see the most benefit out of it. Um, Within Yoast, or within uh, WordPress as a whole, I should say, I'm all over the place, uh, you can use a couple other plugins for redirects instead and still get a lot of benefits. Uh, three, redirection is the big redirect tool that sticks out to me. Simply 301 redirects, is that the other uh, one? Yeah, simple 301. So simple 301 redirects is one tool. Uh, it's just like a plugin that you can add to the site. Um, another really great one you can work with is called redirection. Uh, and that's if you don't want to get into the HD access file and set up redirects on your own, which I've broken enough <laughs> HD access files that I would say do not play around with it unless you really know what you're doing. Um, but yeah, that's just a, a little spiel on that. Um, anything else you can think of for Yoast know, Premium? Yeah, I, I would say in general, if you're just like basic SEO, no need to pay for Yoast Premium. I'd say you're good to go for basic metadata, um, the free version. Yeah, it opens up a lot of the technical capabilities, but you know, if you're just, just getting into the optimization of your site, I would say the juice isn't worth the squeeze. There's a lot of other things you can do prior to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, I think it's 80 bucks, maybe 100 bucks a year. You can spend that money in much better yeah. ways. Title tags, meta description, and site suite are maybe like the biggest things to really focus on out of the gate. Um, and then once you get past that and you still have you know, juice to squeeze, then you can get the tech file and then see indexation and do the rest of it. Absolutely. Any other questions? Yeah, is, it, can you substitute content link in the written form with uh, with the video? Like, can you like have that number in a sense? Like, if I had, I don't know, like a, a five minute video, and instead of it being like, what was, what was the magic number? Eight hundred words or fifteen hundred words? What was it? Uh, like two thousand words. Like two thousand words. Yeah. If I had like a five minute video, but like only like a thousand words. It, could it still carry the same weight? Like how much weight does this video hold? Absolutely. So, borrowing a lot of brilliance from other SEOs who are far more intelligent than myself, um, Bruce Clay, very well respected international SEO, has theorized that by, I think it was 2025 maybe, that five of the top 10 results on Google will be videos from YouTube. Uh, given that YouTube is a video or is it a uh, Google owned property, I'm really inclined to with that and I know for us internally for our own marketing efforts our YouTube channel is still a joke but we're trying to spend more time creating YouTube videos um, but to directly answer your question yes so incorporating videos onto your content is gonna ultimately help people as long as the videos are gonna be relevant as long as the page is well optimized it's still gonna be extremely valuable for the reader um, one thing I'd actually really recommend doing is create a YouTube channel because uh, ultimately if you're on YouTube, you deal with a different search ranking algorithm where backlinks don't carry as much authority. And as a result, some of those big authority sites like Wikipedia, Entrepreneur, Forbes, are at a little bit of a disadvantage compared to Google search results where they have these massive domains that make it much easier for them to rank. They have a much higher like base URL rating. Uh, but long and short of it, if you can upload great videos into YouTube, and then you publish articles on your site that embed those YouTube videos. And then what you can even do is you can add a little YouTube transcript from there. We personally worked with a tool called SpeechPad, which I would really highly recommend for transcription services. I think they charge like a dollar or a minute for transcriptions. Uh, but what you could do is you could upload the YouTube video, have the transcript below it. Uh, or similarly, you could upload the video and have content to go in addition to it. If you want to look at a great format for that, uh, Moz, M-O-Z does this cool thing that they call Whiteboard Fridays, which I think, it, as the name implies, I think it's every Friday still that they release these like five to 15 minute long SEO trainer videos. What they'll basically do is they record a short video delving into like one granular element of SEO, and then they put the transcription right below it. 
And over time, that's become one of the top resources I think that most SEOs would recommend for people who are just getting looking to get little tidbits of information. Um, they, I mean, they're an incredible SEO team over there, and they have a great SEO software. Um, so actually, if you look at their Whiteboard Fridays, that'll give you a great format for how you can structure it for your own site as well. Does the algorithm read uh, captions on the on the video, or is that not readable by by the algorithm? So I believe. Don't quote me on this one, because um, video SEO is still definitely not my area of expertise. Mm -hmm. I believe that YouTube does have the ability to actually like record and understand words as they're said. Hey, hey, do, does do? Sure okay, cool, yeah. cool. What about uh, Google search? Do they have the ability? I don't know of Google having the ability to like hear words or see captions, but. No, they'll Thank you for chiming in. Um, any other questions? You gotta give us that sweatshirt. I don't know, Brandon, I think you were. <laughs> Here, you know what? Coming up with an answer like that. Sorry, everyone. Oh, man. Awesome. Any other questions that we can delve into? Okay, awesome. Well, I'll be here for a little while. I do want to go rock climbing probably in the next half an hour or so. But <laughs> selfishly, selfishly. Um, but no, I can hang around for as long as you guys want. Just know you're keeping me back from actually going rock climbing. So. <laughs> no, no, I'm in no hurry to get out of here. So come up, come talk to me, ask about Junto, ask about our processes. Uh, I'd love to either help you to move forward on your own or see how we can help you guys out. Bare minimum, come up to me and I'll share some really kick-ass resources that you guys can look at depending on where you're at, at your stage of the business. But aside from that, guys, again, I'm Pat from Junto. This is David from Junto here, and this is Darren from Junto over here. And uh, yeah, thank you for coming. It's been awesome talking to you guys.